Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Joining us here on uh, Real Agriculture Now, we have Scott Chalmers with Manitoba Agriculture. He looks after uh, the Wado Westman Agricultural Diversification, Diversification. Organization. Yep. So, you've, Scott, you've been involved in plenty of research over the years in intercropping canola and, uh, and peas. Can you fill us in on, uh, on some of the studies that, that sure. you've done? Yeah. Uh, in the past, we, uh, I guess we did some plots with pea and canola looking at seeding rate. And, and that year, we had an unbelievable yield advantage of up to 60% yield gain um, growing the crops together than if they were separate. Uh, so that prompted the question of what's going on. Uh, so we did some later studies of looking at uh, uh, dividing the rows up into individual crop species, uh, looking at nitrogen rates, uh, things like that. And uh, basically what we found is when the plants are basically growing on top of each other in the same row, uh, that's when we get the, the greatest benefit in over yielding. As we separate those rows out, uh, that benefit is still there, but it's less and less. Some of the other research shows in that study that we're actually using more moisture in intercropping, uh, which makes sense if we're producing a greater crop. Uh, the other thing we found is that they, they, there's probably some uh, nitrogen sharing uh, that is from maybe fixed from the pea uh, and potentially given up to the canola, uh, where the canola would pick it up and put it into production. Uh, we find our, our soil uh, nitrogen credit is lower in intercropping uh, with pea than it would be just pea on its own. And that, that's sort of proof that uh, um, you know, canola is using some of that excessive nitrogen credit uh, produced by pea. Uh, we also suspect that we're actually using more phosphorus as well, uh, maybe more potash too. Uh, if we're over yielding, we're obviously removing more nutrients from the soil. So our future work that we want to do is look at phosphorus and see if we can get a response uh, uh, with higher phosphorus rates. Uh, it's also important if we are removing uh, grain from the, the land with the, the nutrients in that grain that we replace uh, what we've taken away and put it back into the soil, whether it's fertilizer or uh, uh, maybe cropping some other uh, cover crop or something like that. Going back to when you say over yielding, can you uh, expand on, on what you've seen sure. in terms of numbers? Uh, what we've seen with over yielding, uh, we, we, we have seen anywhere from 10% to all the way up to 60% yield benefit. Uh, and we, we define that as a land equivalent ratio. Uh, for example, if we have a, a ratio of 1.2, uh, that means we would need 20% more land to grow the two crops if they were separate. Uh, that's, that's one way to, to give a currency to the, the, to the topic. You can also use pounds per acre, that kind of works, but uh, putting it in land equivalent ratio or in dollars, dollars per acre, uh, we always get that benefit uh, with, uh, with the economics. Have, have you seen guys picking up on this and, and yeah, trying? Absolutely, acres uh, we've, we've seen quite a few acres go in Manitoba. Uh, my greatest concern is that there isn't any crop insurance for for doing this method, uh, but most farmers go into it knowing that uh, they, they're just aiming for that yield benefit. Um, and I, I would like to encourage maybe potentially alfalfa or clovers being underseeded in the understories as well, so that there's always something green growing, uh, fixing nitrogen, uh, keeping the soil healthy and building soils with organic matter. All right, thank you.